Good morning and I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to all the listeners to this meditation. Another new day has been added to our lives. It is only because of God's wonderful faithfulness and mercy. So let us live our lives today in its fullness as God wants us to be. God wants us to enjoy life. But at the same time, we need to be very careful because we are accountable to God for any sin that we may commit. And so today's meditation is centered around the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Now, in this passage, the writer of this book <clears throat> talks about discipline and talks about chastisement and uh, talks about how we should run the race that is before us. Because what follows in chapter 12 hinges on what is in chapter 11. And what is in chapter 11? Chapter 11 is the record of heroes of faith. Shall we say it is a, a, a hall of fame of heroes of faith. And when you read chapter 11, you cannot read it without being amazed at, the, at what faith has accomplished through these very simple, ordinary people. And um, so as I said, chapter 12 is, uh, does talk about discipline as well. Now the author is saying, run well. Not because of what these witnesses in chapter 11 see in us, but because of what we see in them, in these heroes of faith. Now, what do we see in them? Let us take just one example. Abraham. What do we see in Abraham? We see in him a faith to believe God when he did not know where he was to go, why he had to go, what he had to go, uh, or what he had to do, and how far he had to go. While he did not know any of these things, the command came without any further details. And so what did Abraham do? He simply was asked to leave his city, his household, his family, and the culture and civilization of uh, the city in which he was living. He was living in the city of Ur, uh, considered to be a modern city during those days, with one of the best library, public library in the city, uh, a place where people could learn. And uh, so everything familiar and everything very dear to him, he was asked to leave. And that's what he did. Without knowing any of these answers to these questions, he just started walking. And the rest is history, as you know. Christian life is not only a life of uh, faith, it is also a race. And that means run the race. And the author is saying, run your race well. In this race, most important thing to do is set aside sin, the author says, because it is a weight. Now, it doesn't require much wisdom uh, to understand uh, uh, that a few things are most important requirements in running the race if you are serious about winning the race. And the first one is discipline with practice. In a competition, we see only a few people running together and uh, one win the race and he gets the crown or she gets the crown. That's all we see. But what we do not see is the years of practice with the discipline. And that too, not ordinary practice, but strenuous practice. 
and not one week or two weeks or few months, but years of a practice. And when you run the race, you carry nothing heavy. And that is important too. Weight is a great hindrance to the race. So we are instructed to get rid of um, sin because it is a weight. And in the Christian race, Christian life is compared to a race. That is why Apostle Paul says, I have run the race. Christian life is like that. And we run the race to win. And that is important to keep in mind. Don't think we really understand the hellishness of sin. Think about the sufferings of Christ. You will know the ugliness of sin. How devastating sin is. You just have a look at the suffering Savior on the cross. While hanging on the cross, you look at him. And the Bible describes in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 that there was, I mean, even his figure was so devastated and ugly that he could not be recognized as a human being. That's what the suffering did to Jesus. And that is the ugliness and devastating power of a, of a sin. And a sin will rob you of the effectiveness of your witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Christians must look like they are redeemed before I can put my faith in their Redeemer. If I am not a saved person and somebody is coming to witness to me and I must look at his life and see and understand that he is truly a redeemed person. He's totally changed. And if I don't see that, then I'm not willing. That's why uh, Mahatma Gandhi said once, I love the Christ of Christians, but I don't like the Christians. But you know, but that will not excuse him. He has no excuse for not recognizing Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior because he, by his own admission, he did not see anything wrong or any fault with Jesus. And then it was for him to follow him, but he didn't. So making such great uh, statement is easy. But then why didn't he follow Christ if he did not see any fault in him? And... Uh, Therefore, it is very important for us to live that kind of a life before the world. And the another thing I want you to notice is sin robe us of the indwelling presence of Jesus Christ. You know, when a Christianity is Christ in us, the hope of, of glory. And if Christ lives in us, all will know who we are. I mean, if Christ is in me, that should be a natural thing to happen. People will know that I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. And even the hell will know. Satan will know who I am if Christ is alive in me. And when you turn away from sin, you will be effective as a witness. And the presence of the Lord shall be in you. And if he is in you, then he is with you. And the people will know, the world will know that we are his disciples. John Wesley grew up on his mother's knees. And one day he asked a question to his mother. Mother, what is sin? And she gave a better definition of what sin is than many theologians would give today. She said, 
listen to this whatever weaken your reasoning and weaken the tenderness of uh, your conscience or obscure your sense of god or take away your relished spiritual things in short if anything increases the power of flesh over your spirit that you become sin however good in itself in short this is what she said anything that blocks the presence of god in your conscience and in your life that thing will become a sin to you and so we should never have anything in us that will block the presence of god any moment any time of the day we must live in the consciousness of his presence as david once said i always set the lord before me what does that mean he meant that i know that i am aware of his presence he is watching me he is listening me and he knows the path that i take and the intentions that i have he knows everything because he is right before me his eyes are always upon me and it is very important therefore that we live in the consciousness of his presence without disciplined practice number 1 discipline and practice there's a lot of strong discipline you have to follow when you practice your race and that same discipline must be kept when you actually participate in the competition and with that discipline you practice every day of many years keep the same discipline in your practice as you would when you actually participating in the run in the race that is a number one the number two is having no weight on your body because weight is a hindrance to you winning the game or a race no race and uh, no one who is participating in a race carry any load on his shoulder as much as possible you make yourself light nothing should be there on your body that will hinder your race and that is what the the, the author of the book of hebrew says get rid of the sin that clings to you It is easy to get rid of a bag or a baggage on from your back or from your shoulder or from your hand you can throw it away but there are sins in our life that so easily cling to us and that is very difficult to remove and as long as those sins are there it will remain as a weight in your christian race and you will not make it and therefore you need the holy spirit every day to show you where you need to lighten yourself may the holy spirit help you my brother my sister you who are listening to me time is very short christ is about to come and when he comes for the rapture we must be ready to be taken away to be with him so let us live our lives and run this race of christian life so that we will win and please our god and our master thank you and may the lord bless you father i thank you for blessing the listeners to this meditation grant to them grace and mercy o lord that they will continue to get rid of any sin that so easily cling on to them so that they will be free to run the race without feeling guilty thank you and we praise you in jesus name amen god bless you my friends this is a great day enjoy your day